5,565 pounds, the very popular 2410 rear living open range here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. She comes in well, nicely within that half ton towability with an upgraded Equiflex suspension system as compared to the industry standard ultralight. Um, it is completely carpetless, has no vents in the floor, has wisp reducted air like a fifth wheel, 80 inch queen bed, and it all comes in under 30 feet with an extended season camping package that, given the snow on the ground, would be something I think a lot of people will appreciate. Now, quick note here, you can see this RV just, just came into our facility here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. You can see that the uh, vehicle that brought it in threw some road spray on the front of it. The good news is that you won't see that when you take it home because part of the no fees uh, benefit of working with Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan is that we clean every single RV that leaves here top to bottom, inside and out so that you don't have to. And that's just the start of the kind of things that we do for you at no additional charge. We will discuss a lot of good qualities about this RV, but one of its most popular is its ability to be mm, pretty much fully accessed with the slide closed. So the refrigerator is on our left. That's this big stainless steel brick that's floating past the camera. All of our cabinetry, uh, the sink, all of our prep space, the bathroom, the bedroom, even, uh, you know, if you have a if you're going to be doing a guest sleeping weekend, but you have to drive to get there, like you got a grandkid or something, the dinette's still available. You know, I mean, you can basically use everything with the exception of the television when this RV is closed. I suppose you could theoretically look through the slide windows to be able to see the TV on the right-hand side over here, but I don't think anyone's going to do that. But for traveling stops, I don't think the TV is generally considered a critical piece of equipment. Now, in addition to that good traveling access, this one brings with it a few class and even industry-exclusive qualities. So, up top here, you've got the same quiet, cooling, whisper-ducted air system as something like a big, fancy luxury fifth wheel. Open Range Ultralight was the first uh, ultralight travel trailer to ever do that. And I don't know of another ultralight travel trailer that is doing it yet. So I do believe that is a class exclusive feature. Now, down here, you see how we have no floor vents and we are completely carpetless. Once again, Open Range was the first manufacturer to do that. Since uh, that happened uh, recently here, like the Freedom Express Liberty Edition has also adopted a completely carpetless floor uh, ventless nature of things. So this is no longer industry exclusive, but it is still extremely hard to find. As my old farmer grandfather would say, it's about as rare as hen's teeth. So uh, the cool thing here, that makes this extremely easy cleaning and pet friendly. And you will see that pet friendly is a recurring trend as we go through this RV. So as we uh, take a look over here, we got our big u net where we can sit down, have a bite to eat, uh, it's all sealed edge countertops through the entire RV, by the way, whether it's that table or uh, in the kitchen or the bathroom. And you've got tons of windows all giving us great light, great airflow. But if we take a look, you see that that dinette can fold down into a nice guest sleeper. And you might have noticed how those uh, are like blackout uh, shades on those blinds right there on the windows so that you can really kind of blot out the sun if you are so inclined. So if you want it, you've got all kinds of cross breeze windows. If you want privacy or it's just too darn hot outside, you can pull those shades shut and keep the sunshine from cooking you. You may have noticed how that is a dual reclining uh, heat massage theater seat right there. And this, uh, like the TV is directly to my right uh, as we're speaking currently. So you are on Boardwalk and Park Place, directly across from that No Neck Wrecker Entertainment Center. Uh, again, heat massage, it does have USB uh, plugs built right into it, and uh, handy little cup holders, which is one of those things that is a unsung feature in this business, because um, a lot of sofas, when you're sitting at them, you don't have anywhere to, you know, put a drink or something like that. Or is this one, uh, that is absolutely not an issue. Another thing this one does deceptively well is kitchen storage space and prep space. It has it in oodles, which is pretty impressive considering this is a space-focused rear living couples camper. It, it, it just has awesome storage capacity. So I want to begin by mentioning that this is all pocket screwed cabinetry, not stapled particle board. Um, you know, you actually have the screws holding the cabinet styles together. The style, if you're not aware, is like the box part of the uh, cabinet with uh, nice hardwood uh, door frames. So it's something that looks good and will hold up. 
Uh, especially nice when uh, you consider that in conjunction with the Equiflex suspension system that we'll talk more about outside. Now this thing just has windows everywhere and I love those dual kitchen windows overlooking the campsite of your RV and if you notice they're located right next to that seat right there so if you're sitting down you can just look to the right and see exactly what's going on outside your campsite. Notice even that armrest kind of gets in on the storage act. Now the one criticism I've heard people offer this floor plan is that the, there's a chunk of counter space here that is useless and you can't get to it. I just completely disagree. And I think that that's the difference between actually getting in one of these RVs and only seeing them uh, on screen. Because some people look over here and they say, well, what is that good for? Well, it's good for a lot of things. It's good for coffee makers. It's good for general prep space. There are power outlets on the right hand, or pardon me, left hand side, both USB and household, by the way. And you can reach that easily from the kitchen sink by simply reaching your arm to the right. It is not hard to get to. And someone will say, yeah, but if uh, there's a person in the theater seat right there, you can't get to it. Well, it's really a pretty simple solution. There tends to be, usually, in most households, a campsite cook. Then there tends to be the, uh, the couch potato in my house. I tend to be the couch potato only because my wife likes food that actually tastes good when you eat it, so she tends to take that charge because that is not within my wheelhouse. So, easy solution. I sit on the right side, she sits on the left side, and then, when it is prep time, nobody is in her way. And usually, when it is prep time, I just stay out of the kitchen because, again, I only have a way of messing things up. I don't care if I just microwave it. I have a way of messing stuff up. It's just not what I'm good at. <laughs> Now all of this again is sealed edge countertop space right here and you can see that stainless sink. I popped one of the flush mount covers off so you could take a look at it. You know, good drawer space right where you need it and I love that uh, little mini vertical pantry so that stuff comes to you and you don't have to go to the storage. But look at the double tiered drawers going on below the oven right there. Now that bottom drawer is where this handy little pet dish can be stowed away, or you could just slide it out for your little four-legged furry friend if and when you are so inclined. Now, if you are a person who goes, uh, I don't care, I don't camp with pets, well, obviously, you can just take that little black tray out, and suddenly, you just magically now have an additional kitchen drawer that 100% of everybody will appreciate. These have an eight cubic foot fridge freezer that is gas and electric, so you can operate it pretty much anytime, pretty much anywhere. And something that I like to put these videos together for you to uh, be able to see is this space right over here by the door because it is not very photo friendly. It's just in an awkward spot, you, but you can see you don't just have that tiny little pantry next to your kneecaps. You actually have a legit pantry right by the door and they even section that bottom left area there as a coat closet. And the attention to detail, the thought of like who and how is this RV going to be used, you can see as we start going through it, it is done very, very well. Now that TV is on a swing arm. If you want to, you can pivot that TV over to be visible very easily over here from the dining area. We've already seen how that can be a sleeper, but you notice how it also has easy access storage. Now, a uh, little miniature pantry tainment center right there below the TV, and that is a Bluetooth uh, HDMI input soundbar, by the way, from Furion. What's also cool, though, you look at this and you see just one uh, pedestal below that table. That's not normal. A lot of times you'll find two. What's nice about that, because it's kind of centralized and out of the way, it doesn't prevent you from scooting around the dinette, and it is far less of a knee knocker when it comes for long-legged folks like me sitting there trying to have a meal or play some cards with friends. It's just out of the way. I want to give you a quick look at everything closed just so you can see it in its nice, you know, area. But also two things here. Again, that TV can pivot out, but notice it can do so without interfering with the bathroom door. Really smart because if somebody comes flying out of there in a hurry or they just the door gets away from you sometimes, no big deal. It's not going to smash your TV up. Now, we're going to make a quick pit stop on the way to the bed and bath areas to take a look at the command center, the control panel over here. At a glance, it looks just about like every other one you've ever seen. But in the upper left corner here, there's that little white sticker. This RV has built into it a hidden version of LCI-1 control. That's something that you'll find in common with Eagle travel trailers, White Hawk travel trailers, the Jayco Cousin counterparts to this open range ultralight that you would also find here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. There's even versions of that on the uh, Gray Wolf campers from Forest River that we have here. It's become a pretty cool thing. And it's neat because 
If you're like, I don't care, I don't want to deal with all this technology, I don't want another app on my phone, don't do it, no big deal. But if you would like to be able to operate your awning, your uh, lights, your slide, uh, you know, remotely, you can do that too with a free app. Uh, there's the skylight above, and the vaulted ceiling gives us plenty of headroom, big radius shower for elbow room, and did you notice that is a stainless sink contained within that uh, sealed edge counter, and a uh, porcelain foot flush. Now you can see how this is a dual entry bed and bath right next to our main entry door. So if you need a quick in and out like it's a Taco Tuesday potty emergency, no big deal. She's right there and available to you. Or if you have a guest sleeping, you know, you have the kind of separate private space in the middle where everyone can get to the bathroom without disturbing everybody else. But a lot of people recently, I've noticed, <clears throat> have been saying, uh, I don't like that extra door into the bedroom right there. You can disable it. You can basically just disable that door so that it's literally just a wall. You could hang an extra little thing over there so that you could have a little more space for like towels or whatnot. You know, there's extra things you can do. Now up here in the bedroom area, there are a couple really cool kind of Legend of Zelda hidden secrets that are easy to miss that I think you are going to like. Now it has all the bare necessities. There's TV hookups directly across from the bed. There are household and USB outlets for those side stands so that, uh, you know, our CPAP users or if you just need a place to charge a phone, you've got those kind of things. Notice, though, there are drawers on either side of the bed below those stands, which is a nice touch. And by the way, that is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. But it's what's going on below the bed in those side stands that I think are my favorite features in this bedroom. First of all, the hole... <laughs> basically, in the side stand on the right. That is a handy little, uh, handry? Handy laundry chute. I guess I'm combining words for my RV nerd definitionary again. But it gives you a place, if you want to put a little uh, clothes uh, basket to catch yesterday's clothes today and get them out of the way, you got the perfect place for it. And that's a motion-sensitive light in the pass-through. It activated itself just when I flipped that lid open, so you can actually see what's going on down there, which that probably wasn't their intention, but it worked and it's pretty cool. And then you're going, look at this. How cute is that? They made this thing ultra pet friendly by basically building in a handy little kennel for a small dog. Now that's not going to handle a you know golden retriever or a bull mastiff or anything like that. But my little 10 pound cotton dog, he'd fit in there just fine. It's cool that it's got the little, you know, grate on the front, and it comes with a handy little My Pillow pet pad inside of it, which, I mean, that's just a nice touch. But you still have generic underbed storage on the left-hand side. And just like the dog dishes, or I suppose cat dishes, below the uh, oven, if you're not, if you're like, I don't, I don't care, I don't care about all this pet stuff, dude, quit talking about it. Well, leave the grate closed, you just have segregated split storage, so in a sense, you now have like, you know, couples partner storage here which is just a neat little touch they're just very good at this stuff and then below that queen bed we've got our full true pass-through with wider taller doors on both sides you see the motion lighting right there there's a couple little kind of nice secrets here though there's a handy battery disconnect so that you don't have parasitic load eating your batteries alive when you're not using the rv but they park it in a position that's way up out of the way you have to very deliberately access it so that you don't accidentally uh hit it or cargo doesn't shift in transit. You also see that little hatch right there. That is that laundry chute that we talked about on the inside of the RV so that you have a place to put yesterday's clothes now that it's today. Right next to that big baggage door, we got ourselves a side solar prep plug so that, uh, you know, if you are going to do a little bit of off-grid camping, you do have the ability there to, uh, you know, plug a little solar suitcase job in, which those things are very good, actually, about giving you pretty much indefinite use of things like lights and fans while you're traveling. The uh, light, bright skin that they've had on these for a few seasons, like, you've seen a few other brands have suddenly adopted, uh, you know, an all-white skin package. Open Range has been doing this for a while now. And that's part of the reason they perform so nicely in the summertime. The white skin reflects more light organically from the sun, you know, and it doesn't cost extra. They don't have to put, like, extra stuff in the RV to make it comfortable in the sunshine. Although they do standardize that larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner, which I think everybody will appreciate. I want to look at a couple of the kind of open range differences here. There's a few oddball things that they do that is just not industry standard and it's nice they do this all the way down here in their travel trailers just like their big fifth wheels things like their corner mold extrusions right here 
as compared to industry standard, it is a, uh, a formed aluminum right here. It does not have that plastic screw trim on it. It's a different kind of thing with a different kind of seal under it so that uh, the, you know, the front and the sidewalls or the sidewall and the rear wall or whatever two faces are meeting one another, um, basically they're just stronger and it's harder for water to be able to get through there. Now, uh, you might have noticed how there was, uh, you can see up top the little magnet hold back for the baggage door, makes them a little more one hand easier to operate. But you've also got these nice piano hinges and in the Midwest, you know, when we get uh, freezing then thawing and freezing and thawing, that's where these things are really nice right here because it keeps the water from getting into that hinge freezing because when water freezes, it expands, and that can spring that hinge. Now, the hinge probably isn't going to break, but it's gonna make that terrible screech, which you're not gonna to have to deal with here. Most things in this class have a very similar water heater. It's a six gallon vessel, um, and you could run the gas and the electric side simultaneously. It gives you just shy of 18 gallons of hot water per hour, which is a nice thing right there above our sewer outlets. I just always like to point out where those are located. Um, down below here, you can't see very much, but this does have a very good extended season package. That's something the open range and their ultralights tackled before most brands in the lightweight market. Long story short, this is zero degree proven for five consecutive hours. Now that's a weird thing to say. Most brands, they always say like four seasons or extended season or thermal package. And what does all this crap mean? Well, Open Range actually has tested their RVs. And you say zero degrees for five hours. Well, that's not very much. It's an extreme amount. It's very, very good, especially within the ultralight class, which has very few truly zero degree, even tested campers. Most brands just say, eh, it's extended season. And uh, you know, you take my word for it. I'm pretty good, right? You know? Well, <laughs> zero degree rated. Let's talk about that. Most people I've noticed seem to associate freezing with zero degrees. Freezing starts all the way up at 32. So first it has to start freezing, which this camper laughs at. Then it has to continue freezing for a while. And this camper's like, what else you got? And it has to get all the way down to zero and stay there for a while before this camper goes, all right, you better get it winterized. Uh, now, obviously you need to have the heat going to uh, achieve those ratings, but the fact is, this is one of the uh, most temperature dynamic proven ultralight RVs available on the market today. And I, I think that's pretty cool. Now we're a little close to the Montana behind uh, this open range, so pardon me as I get a little close to it as we start moving. Um, the rear wall is not like a grayish kind of color, it's actually picking up the reflection of the tan colored Montana behind it. So it is an all white exterior skin. How you doing guys? Um, so we've got uh, UV tinted windows, keeps that sunshine out and they all open for airflow. Cross breeze windows again on both sides of that dinette and the theater seating in the back. So you've always got uh, you know pretty good airflow rolling around in here. Simple water cable docking station right here. Um, you know, nothing too flashy, too fancy, but effective, and it keeps stuff kind of out of the way. The ladder gets us up to that walkable roof. Normally, I would like to take you up to that roof, but given the weather, I'm just not going to risk stomping around on it. Long story short, this is one of the only other RVs out there that uh, basically matches Jayco's roof construction and has like the same plywood roof decking where everybody else is rocking OSB, which is fine. There's just a difference between good and better, and you can obviously see which one this is trying to be. Jumping around the other side there, we get a good look at our power awning. That is easy tilt, and it does have LED lighting below it. It also has speakers in the heads of the awning arm so that, you know, logically, if uh, you're in a position where you want to be listening to music outside, that awning is probably open, so everything kind of makes sense there. Whipping past our LED taillights as we work our way down, right behind that rear stabilizer jack is an outside uh, uh, gas hookup. So if you want to put a little RVQ grill or like a black stone or something like that, you got the perfect little place for it. And you got a nice little place to keep your barley pops on hand while you're outside. Or I guess some people put bottles of water in here. Uh, but yeah, that's weird, right? Whatever, moving on. But <laughs> you get the idea. So that fridge, remember, plus the fridge inside, it gives this little thing over 10 cubic foot of cold storage. That is awesome. Outside TV hookups. And I mentioned when the video first, first began, a better suspension versus industry standard. If you look between those wheels, you see that yellow thing. 
that is an Equiflex uh, uh, suspension system. Long story short, you've got a leaf spring suspension, but it has a rubber ride shock dampener in there to take the road chatter out of your towing experience. And those Equiflexes are actually very good about um, dampening front to back bucking and chucking. So like if you have to hit the brakes real quick, the trailer tends not to jam against your back so hard. So <clears throat> that's one of those things though. Very few brands seem to actually be putting money into that anymore because very few customers know about it. That will give this a nicer ride and handling experience. The stable steps have uh, become standard as they have with many, many brands. And typically, even if they're optional, we found people want us to throw them on here at Halo RV. Um, little pet friendly things too, like you see this little green job right by the door. That is a combination place where you could tie uh, a little um, you know, pet leash or something like that but it's also barley pop opener. So when you are using that outside fridge for something other than just bottled water, maybe some barley pop, you're good. The uh, entry door here, you can see the bigger handle and that is anti-slam by the way to uh, you know make an easier experience coming and going. So hopefully you've uh, enjoyed your experience here with us today here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Remember that we at some point need to earn your business to keep these videos rolling so if you appreciate what we do here all i ask all i ask is to give our team the fair opportunity to earn your business when you are ready if we need to answer some questions if you're not ready to do that right away today no sweat perfectly respect it we've tried to put good information out there to help you you know uh, get your foot in the door dip your toe in the pond and narrow it down which one you might be looking at before you give us a call but if you need a little more help getting there we are more than happy to provide that as well so take care Stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.